Hey guys, so today we'll be making some cinematic ocean waves in Blender using the EV Render Engine, and let's take a look. So we'll end off with a mesh like this, and this should only take about 10 minutes. Now, as you can see, this is going to take up quite a bit of memory, so um, you may want to turn down the resolution option that I will show you later because this could crash your computer pretty easily. So, let's get started. So, first, all you want to do is make a plane, and then you can apply the ocean modifier in the modifiers tab, and it'll automatically generate an ocean. So, right now what you want to do is change these settings. So, uh, the time is a setting we can animate by putting keyframes. We'll leave it at zero for now. Uh, the resolution, so this will show uh, how much resolution your waves are. I'm going to change this to 15 and you can see it looks a lot better. Uh, you could change it to maybe like 30 or something. Uh, actually that won't work maybe too well. I have a pretty decent GPU so I'm not crashing my computer. But if you're on a laptop or something, uh, 15 should be fine, maybe even 10. So you want to turn up the scale, uh, and we can leave pretty much everything else as normal. Maybe you can change the choppiness if you want. Uh, you can play with the setting. I like the looks of these sharp waves, but uh, if you want to make them duller, all you have to do is turn down the choppiness. So we'll just leave it at 1 for now. I'll turn up the scale to say 5-ish. Uh, and that's looking pretty good. Now, if you just change the time value, you can see how these waves are being animated. And all we have to do right now is generate foam. So if we look, uh, if we take a look at it right now, and uh, let's just change that lamp into a sun lamp, and we'll turn down the strength a little, maybe a lot, just so we can see how it looks. All right, and you want to be using EV for this. Make sure to change that. So right now you can't really see anything. So why don't we set up the material? Okay, I, I like changing this to uh, viewport shading because using the look dev kind of looks weird. Sorry, to the rendered mode. So just click that. So we'll create a new material, we'll call it waves. And so what we have to do right now in order to add foam, which we have to do here, is we need to create a foam data layer name, uh, which basically just tells us where the foam is. Uh, we can call it whatever you want. I'll call it foamy. Uh, and I'll turn up the coverage to, say, 0 0.25. And you're not going to be able to see anything yet. So just bake it. Actually, scratch that. Don't bake it. Not right now. Um, we can just leave it as is. Okay, so make sure you have all these settings configured like this. And now all we have to do is... We'll add an attribute node. And this is going to tell us... This is going to allow us to call our uh, foam layer. So make sure you type it in there. And you can call this for whatever you want. So we'll duplicate this shader. And we'll mix it with the with the foam and we'll use this attribute as the factor input so we go to shader mix and we can already see the foam so this top input will be the color of the actual ocean And the bottom input will be the color of the 
foam on top and you can see like it highlights the top of the waves. Now if you want to see like where it is, you can always increase this input uh, for the coverage value right here and you'll have more or less. Maybe we'll go with 0.5, that might look a little better. Now the thing is, if you have your resolution like way too low, you're not really going to be able to see it. So I think you'd want to have it at least at 10. I'd go with uh, 15 or 20 if your uh, computer's not going to crash with it, but uh, make sure to save your file also. Just in case it does crash. So right now we have this, and sure, I mean this looks okay, but what we want to do is add another cool effect. So we'll add a wireframe modifier. And that is going to uh, create a lot more lag, so make sure to be careful with that. Uh, we're going to turn the color of the world down to complete black. And to achieve that effect I showed at the start, all we need to do is make the actual waves black. We'll increase their reflectivity by turning up the metallic and turning down the roughness. Alright, so that looks pretty cool. Make sure to zoom out somewhere a little further. Maybe to a corner, to the side. And then Control alt 0 to set the camera there. Uh, we can move it on the local Z axis by tapping G and then hitting Z twice. So hitting Z once will move it. So G, Z. We'll move it on the global Z axis while moving it. Uh, while hitting Z twice, you'll move it on the local Z axis, which is pointing out of the camera. So make sure you position it uh, just about there. Now our sun lamp, uh, it looked pretty strong before, but we actually want it to be maybe a little stronger. So we'll go into the settings, 5 maybe, that looks good. Uh, I want to turn down the whiteness of this a little bit, so what we can do is we can just decrease the coverage. So click that, so we'll go to the foam coverage and we'll change it to uh, I think I set to 0 0.2, oops, uh -huh. One. okay, there we go, let's just give it a quick render to see how it turns out, uh, and you can see a lot of like artifacts here, or maybe not artifacts, these are just reflections, and there are a lot of them because there are a lot of vertices. So I think maybe turning up the roughness a little bit would reduce that. Oops, I don't want to turn the metallic too high. Uh, another way to reduce the prevalence of the foam is we can also add a path node. And we can Uh, maybe multiply makes more sense for this. So we can multiply the input. So if we increase it, then the the uh, foam is going to be more prevalent. Whereas if we decrease it to a little bit more, we can change how this looks without actually decreasing the coverage of the foam. So we'll put it at like 0 0.5. That's a bit bright. And now all we have to do is a little bit of fine tuning. Maybe one. Actually multiplying by one doesn't do anything. 0 0.8. Hmm. Okay, so this light is still a little bit bright. It's 
So make sure to turn on bloom. You can turn down the threshold a little bit so you can see it. And we want this foam to appear uh, a little bit more pronounced. I, I think this could be a little bit darker. And for this bloom to actually kick in, we either need to lower the threshold a lot, which is not going to work because it's going to uh, be triggered by everything. Or we can up the value of the sun lamp. I'm just worried about putting it a little bit too high. You can see how this looks close up, which is, I mean, not that great. But it looks okay from this angle. Uh, and what we also want to do is turn on depth of field. So we can set the focus of the camera just at this 3D origin. So zero zero zero. We'll just add an act. We'll add an empty. Oops. An empty right here. And call it focus. Then select the camera. We'll select depth of field. And we'll select the focus object to be our focus. Then we can turn down the f-stop a little, or a lot. We'll set it to where that is. And the rest of this is just uh, fine-tuning these values. If you want this to be like less bright, uh, what you can do is either decrease the coverage of the foam, or even decrease the resolution. That would work too. Or you can turn down the value of the sun lamp. Or you could even uh, like change it to an area lamp or something, but you'd have to turn up like the power to a lot. 10,000. And I guess that looks pretty interesting too. Alright, so now to animate this, all we have to do is so we'll set our cursor to frame 1. We'll hover over this time value, hit I. Now, I'm not actually sure if this is how you're supposed to do it, but just keyframe it there, and it'll turn yellow. And we'll go to 100. Come on. Uh, my computer's lagging a little bit. Maybe we'll turn down the resolution to 15. Oh boy, what the heck. this back up. So at frame 100, you want to set this to like 10 or something. Hit I again. And we'll set that as the end frame. Oops. 100. And uh, you could try to preview this, but I expect it will be quite laggy. Yep. That's about how I expected it. So uh, you can also see here that the camera actually shows the underside of the mesh, and you don't really want that. I mean, it looks kind of weird. So you could move your camera up and rotate it down a little bit on the x-axis. Oops, that's too much. And we'll zoom in a little more. I guess you could even have it as a point lab. I mean, it all depends. Mm 
You might just want to have like a, a sun lamp here just to show the outlines of stuff and uh, like a really strong area lamp somewhere just highlighting the middle. Then we turn that up to like a thousand. Five thousand. Yeah, that looks pretty decent. Uh, and I think that depth of field effect really gives it a lot of uh, focus in the middle, and it blurs out the background and stuff, so it looks pretty cool. Now, be careful on overdoing it with the uh, depth of field, though, because it kind of looks weird. Uh, and it can lead to a couple of like artifacts like this, when you have depth of field, like these tiny sparks, combined with bloom. So it just makes like random circles everywhere, and that can look a little bad. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want, you can do some compositing. So we can add a bit of chromatic aberration around the edges. So all we have to do is go to distort, lens distortion I think, with projector. Okay, let's first render this. And we'll turn up the dispersion to a little bit much. Maybe something like that. But it that might also look a little weird. It kind of depends on what you want this to look like. Yeah, and if you want to add another layer of like clear on top of it, feel free. Although you might want to have that before the chromatic aberration. I like to go with the usual fog glow. Uh, and yeah, so just a bit more fine tuning is all, all you need. Anyways, so that's the rest, that's the whole tutorial. So uh, I hope you enjoyed and learned something from that. Uh, like and subscribe and all that if you thought it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.